I'm just gonna like keep dancing till it kicks in. I think we're good. Okay, it says I'm live. Hi, Becky here from inside the square, hopping on to YouTube very spontaneously to talk about some Squarespace SEO myths. Now, why am I here? I've been recording a bunch of these on Instagram and I realized not all of my YouTube friends are on Instagram too. So I thought I'd share them with you. I wanted to demystify the top seven Squarespace SEO myths that I hear all the time. I'm working on my own personal SEO strategy for inside the square. I reevaluate it once every three months or so. So I'm spending some time working on it and thought I would be really happy to uh, help you with yours. So that's what we're gonna do here. We're gonna talk about the top seven Squarespace SEO myths that are not true. Now this is live and I really enjoy these live events because we've got the chat box going. So hop on over there into the chat box and let me know if you've heard any of these myths before or if you have heard some that I'm not addressing in this top seven, I would love to talk about SEO with you specifically for Squarespace. So let's start with myth number one, People are saying Squarespace is bad for SEO. That myth is not true, my friends. That is total malarkey. Anyone that tells you one website development platform is worse than another has no idea what they're talking about. And I'll tell you why. There are many different rank factors that go into where a website is ranked in search results. The algorithm's constantly updating. Competition's constantly changing. These rank factors are constantly shifting in influence as to how much of a percentage they represent in the overall rank that a web page will get in search results. But one of the number one factors that has been in the past and will always be in the future is content. Good quality content will continue to rank. Yes, there are some things that WordPress will do better than Squarespace. There are some things that Wix will do better than Show It. And there are some things that Squarespace will do better than all of the other ones. Every single website building platform has pros and cons when it comes to search engine optimization. But anyone who says one platform is better than another has no idea what they're talking about. It's all about the quality of content that you put out there and the other ways that you can influence all of those rank factors. All right. Myth number two. Alt tags are for Google. That myth is also not true, my friends. While you can improve your search engine rank by adding your key terms, key phrases, keywords, whatever you want to call it, to your alt tags, don't write those just for Google. Those are for accessibility. Alt tags are for people using screen readers who don't know what an image is actually an image of. They need the screen reader to tell them. Alt tags are descriptive tags. They stand for alternative text to describe what an image is. Yes, you can use them to help explain to Google that this image on this particular page is super related to a term. That's totally an awesome thing to do, but don't write them for Google. That is a myth. Alt tags are for people first, Google second, okay? So myth number one, Squarespace is bad for SEO. Not true. Every website building platform has its advantages and its disadvantages. It's all about how you optimize for all of the rank factors. Myth number two, alt tags are for Google. Not true. Alt tags are for people first and bots second. All right, I've got four more to go through or five more. I'm going to do seven today. So let me know in the comments if you've got one you want me to add to the list, but we'll keep going and I will slow down a little bit. Thank you for the comment. (laughs) Okay, once you publish your site, Google is going to find all of this awesome content that you wrote on this page that's super related to this term. You've got the header text that is these tags. Your meta descriptions are fully figured out there. Your content is amazing, super applicable, related to the term. You publish it and Google's going to find it. That is not true, my friends. That is not not at all how search engines actually work. Now, Google can discover a site through links, internal linking, and backlinking. It is possible that it's going to discover it someday. But if you want Google to notice what you've done, you've got to tell it that it's there. You should submit your site using the search console. Bing has its own version as well. Should also mention Google's not the only search engine out there. But if you do build a website, you do build a brand new page, you optimize the heck out of it, you've just knocked it out of the park with all those rank factors. One of the super important rank factors has to do with backlinks and internal linking, which is a great way for Google to discover it, but that's not the only way. You should tell Google that it's there. It's kind of like making sure it pays attention to all of your hard work. You've got to raise your clan, your hand in class so that the teacher knows you have the answer, right? That's what we're doing digitally. You've got to raise your hand and say, hey, Google, I've got this brand new page that has the answers you're looking for. 
So once you publish your site, let Google know about it, okay? All right, number four, duplicate content is bad and you will get penalized for it. That is actually not true to a degree. That's kind of a maybe true, maybe not. To be super duper clear, do not duplicate other people's content. Do not steal content from someone else's site. Do not take something someone else made and put it on your website and act like you made it. That kind of duplicate content, that's terrible. Don't do it. It's just bad for you. It's bad for everybody. Not a cool thing to do. Definitely don't duplicate other people's content. But when it comes to your own content, if Google sees that you're using the same terms or the same sentences on multiple pages, it's really not going to care that much, but you're hurting your own search engine rank because all of the credit you could get for a fully optimized page on your site that's super focused on this term, all of that credit's going to be spread out against multiple pages here. People are going to have internal links that go to different pages or backlinks that go to different pages. Your internal links can take people around, pinging them from one page to the next. There's no one page that is going to reign supreme and rank high for that particular content if you've got it on a bunch of pages. So while Google might not penalize you for duplicate content on your site, you're kind of hurting yourself there. So try to make sure that you have one main focus for every page and that main focus isn't the same across all pages. Okay, so we've talked about it. Squarespace is bad for SEO, total myth. Anyone that says one website building platform is better than another, no idea what they're talking about. All of them have their benefits. All of them have their advantages. All of them have disadvantages. It's all in how you use it and how you work those rank factors. All right, second myth, alt tags are for Google. No way, alt tags are for people first, Google second. Third myth, once you publish your site, Google's going to rank it. Not true, my friends. It might take a while for Google to find it, sometimes up to six months, but one of the ways that you can make sure it pays attention to your content is to submit it in Search Console. You can do the same thing for Bing, and I'll use that analogy again. It's like you're sitting in class, you've got to raise your hand to let the teacher know that you've got the answer. That's what we're doing when we submit it to Search Console. They might think you know the answer, they might catch on to it eventually, but if they're actually going to like call on you in class and show your page top of search results there, you've got to let Google know that you've got the answer for it by submitting your page or your site in Search Console. So another myth, we said duplicate content is bad and you'll get penalized for it. That's not necessarily true. Again, to be super duper clear, do not copy someone else's work. That is so not cool. Create original content for your website. But if you're repeating yourself on different pages in your site, Google doesn't really care but it's also not going to rank one page higher than another. It's going to see this content across a lot of pages, and it's going to be really hard to get all of the credit for all the rank factors on one individual page. You're competing with yourself. So make it easier on yourself and pick one main focus for every page. All right, the next thing we have here, social media is a big rank factor. That is also not true. This has been said by many people publicly through the Google blog. I know Matt Cutts has multiple different videos about this out there. They are constantly saying that social media has no factor on your search engine rank organically. However, this is a big however. We've got another one. Brand recognition is incredibly important. If you have a website that has tons of followers on social media and that website shows up in search results, the odds of someone clicking on it because they recognize your brand name those odds are pretty high. The more followers you have, the more exposure you have, the more likely people are to interact with you. So although social media is not a direct rank factor, it can still be pretty important. Brand recognition is very important. And when you see something familiar in search results, you're more likely to click on it. So that myth is uh, kind of a mixed one as well. All right, here's a big one that not a lot of people know about. A lot of people think Google ignores pop-ups. Do you think that's true or not true? The content of the pop-up, that's not actually the issue here. Google does not ignore pop-ups. In fact, it hates them because what a pop-up is doing is blocking the content of your site. If you're forcing someone to interact with a pop-up before they interact with the content that Google is trying to share for that particular search term, it does not like that at all. It's refer I wrote this down. It's referred to as an intrusive interstitial. I can never remember that word, but intrusive interstitial is what it's called. Google it and you'll see what I'm talking about. 
pop-ups, especially full page pop-ups that block the content of your site and require you to interact with them before you can actually see the content on the page, that's very bad. Google doesn't like that. So Google doesn't ignore pop-ups, it hates them. All right, we're on to myth number seven. Page speed matters a lot when it comes to your search engine rank. Friends, that is actually not true. While page speed is a rank factor, multiple studies, study after study, I'll link a few in the description here for you, have shown that page speed is a small factor in your search engine rank. Most recent studies, especially those that have come out after the EEAT update, yes, there's a second E, <laughs> after the latest Google algorithm update, page speed represents about 3% of the rank factor for your site. So that means there's 97% of those rank factors that you can focus on and work on that have nothing to do with page speed. So anyone out there that is trying to tell you that having page speed be like the most important thing to evaluate when it comes to search engine optimization for your actual site, it's important, but it's really not that high up there. So it's kind of interesting stuff. Those are the seven rumors I have heard the most when talking about SEO. Again, I'm working on my own SEO strategy for Inside the Square. Uh, this isn't necessarily a myth, but a good pro tip for you. SEO is never one and done. And let me tell you why. Why, after three years of running this blog on Squarespace, am I still going back to my old posts and optimizing my strategy literally every month? Why am I doing a big deep dive on all my strategy every three months? That's because search engine optimization is constantly changing. Google's algorithm is updating regularly, and my competition is updating too. They're working on new content, new sites, new optimized blog posts that I'm competing with. If I create this blog post and let six months go by with completely ignoring it, I could lose a ton of rank for some really quality content out there. So having an effective SEO strategy that you revisit constantly is incredibly important. Now, I will say a lot of people using Squarespace, let's say you just have one general business site, you might want to revisit it every six months if possible. If you have a blog on your site, you should be revisiting that at the very least every three months, every one month ideally. But I understand time is of the essence, right? We don't always have a lot of time. So at the very least, revisit your SEO strategy for your blog every three months. See what terms you might be losing rank on that you might want to change some stuff about. See what terms you're starting to show up for more. Is there a way that you could really dominate the search results for that particular term? If you have a blog, three months minimum, try to do it every one month. And at the very least, every Squarespacer out there should spend a, a little bit of time reevaluating your SEO strategy every six months at the very least. All right, this was a super quick, like on the fly live chat. I'm pretty sure there was some caffeine in this kombucha because I just talked like really fast through that. I will type out all seven of these myths inside the description. Now, if you're curious about my SEO strategy that I'm working on for Inside the Square, if you want me to help you come up with one for your own website, I've got a workshop coming up on Thursday all about search engine optimization for Squarespace. You can learn more at insidethesquare.co forward slash SEO. That's insidethesquare.co forward slash SEO. Now, these are seven myths I've heard from Squarespace. I'm going to check in the comments and see if you've got some more myths for me to debunk. I'll probably hop on YouTube and do a few shorts, but I have a feeling I need to have a bigger tutorial here on YouTube about optimizing Squarespace specifically. If you want to see that tutorial, give me a thumbs up on this video and let me know in the comments, okay? I'm going to go ahead and end this live stream, but thanks for joining me. I so appreciate it. I hope you found this interesting. And uh, most importantly, have fun with your Squarespace website. Bye for now.